Hey everybody, this is Pete. And in this video, I want to demonstrate a technique for putting holes through both a flat and a curved surface, all with one path pattern, and have the holes maintain a proper orientation, meaning normal to the surfaces. So I've already built the part just to save a little bit of time, and I'll walk you through the overall design. So I created a sketch. And you can see there's a little flat portion, there's a tangent curve here, and then a tangent straight line for the top upper. And <clears throat> we've defined the radius, the arc angle, and those distances. And I've included a point where I want the first hole to start. So this has all been defined inside the parameter table. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show this a couple ways actually. So in this first approach, which you see the design sketch, I've built everything in already. So everything is very parameterized, the arc angles, the lengths. I'm even calculating the arc length, which is two times pi times the radius of the arc. And then because I have an arc angle, that length is going to be whatever my arc angle is divided by 360, because that's the circumference is two times pi times r. And so that gives me that arc length. And then <clears throat> I'm also creating the pattern of the desired spacing. So there's one inch spacing. You could of course change that. The whole quantity then is going to be the pattern length, which is my upper length. So if I look here, it's that distance minus, I'm just assuming you're gonna to wanna to start that hole in the desired length from the end. So that's that little chunk there, plus the arc length, plus the lower length. So that's my pattern length. And then I put that into the equation for whole quantity, which you can see is pattern length divided by the desired spacing. And then you can use functions in Inventor to force things one way or the other. So I'm deciding to use ceiling, meaning if a, if a hole can go down here, I'm gonna force it to go down into that little chunk there. So that's the basic design. Now that's a way to do this. Another way to do this is to create a sketch. So again, I have to save a little time. I built this ahead of time. And I have put a plane right between those, or in this case, it's the origin plane. And then I built a sketch. I'll just turn this, uh, I'll actually edit the sketch. And all I did was project these uh, edges. And then I could stick a point in here if I wanted to, and then do my dimension from here to here, click there, and that could be my you know desired spacing. So you could accomplish the same thing if you didn't feel like if you didn't feel like having to redraw everything or do a fully parametric model, you can just grab whatever surface you have, project geometry, and you'll get the same result. And then what ends up happening in that example is then you'll get reference parameters, right? Because those those dimensions don't control anything. And then I could build the same equation down here. So pattern length could be driven by my parameters or it could be driven by my reference parameters. So that was just a little bit of a setup. Now we'll get to the nitty gritty. And <clears throat> so the first thing I have to do is I need to put a hole in place. So I'm going to put, I'm gonna turn on the visibility of my sketch just temporarily so that I can put a work point in, in on this point right here, okay? So I'm gonna use the technique of a work point and an axis defining the orientation. I could create another sketch, put a point there and, and do the hole that way, but just to kind of show another technique and this one less sketch this way. So now I've put a point and an axis and then I can go ahead and drill a hole. So I'm gonna put the hole in using the point, using the axis, and then um, I'm gonna go through and then my hole is gonna be 7 30 seconds. So I can just do seven divided by 32, hit okay. So now that we've got that, we can go ahead and turn off the visibility of the geometry. We don't need to see it. And then we can turn on our sketch. So the reason I'm turning on my sketch is we're gonna use what's called a path pattern. So we're gonna go ahead and do rectangular. So even though it's a path, you start out with the rectangular pattern tool. We're gonna to grab the hole. And then for the direction, we're gonna pick our sketch. And notice it's gonna put holes in. So this is why we parameterize everything. And I recommend doing all those calculations as you can go back earlier in the vehicle, uh, video if you want. 
but I'm going to go ahead and grab my whole quantity. And then I want my spacing to be that desired spacing. But if you look at it from the side, uh oh, it's not looking good. So what we need to do is we need to do a couple of items down here. So the first thing is we need to change it to direction one. That will help, right? That'll help some. But then what's part of the problem is it's also starting the pattern from back here. So even though our first occurrence is here, it wants to start the pattern from back here. So we can hit the start and we're actually gonna start right at this point. And now what happens is it follows that much more cleanly. Now, one other thing just really quickly is if you're, um, maybe like your cross section is changing, uh, getting thicker or thinner, you can also hit the adjust option. But since it's consistent, we don't need to worry about that here. And we hit okay. And let's go ahead and turn off the sketch so as we can see this a little bit easier. So there is, oh, looks like maybe I do wanna do adjust. Ah, uh, so, yep, that's okay. So that's where we come over to this pattern. And I guess I do wanna do the adjust option. There, that should, I believe, push everything as through holes, oops. And then of course you gotta be careful because when I say adjust, it wants to flip it the other way. So there we go. So I did have to hit adjust there. So I'm glad I showed you guys that. And so that will push the holes all the way through. So <clears throat> the nice thing about parameterizing this is if we go back up here and we change some aspect of it, like we change the arc angle, for example, and we make it say 65, the pattern adapts, right? So you really wanna do a parametric pattern if you feel comfortable with that, because that will make sure that it always is placing the correct number of holes. So hope you found that helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know and have a blessed day.